right, so I'm going to be focusing on um, AnyRail and its relatively new feature on um, designing modules with it. Now, when I started using, now AnyRail is one of several programs um, that you could use for this. Um, I've also dabbled a bit with XTrackCAD. And um, in this presentation today, I learned about CADRail for the first time. So I don't know what others there are. Uh, AnyRail is the one that I kind of settled into um, several years ago. Um, and when I did that, it was version six. And I was thinking, oh, man, I wish it could do modules. Well, recently I, got, I uh, saw, oh, my program needs to update. It updated to version, um, what was it, 762. And holy cow, there's modules in there. So I started dabbling with that. So um, at, that's about the point where um, the subject came up um, in discussion. I said, yeah, I think I could do that. And um, it's been a learning curve between then and today. Um, so I'll cover some of the um, important things uh, related to modules that I have learned. Ah, there we go. Okay, so real quick introduction for anybody who's not familiar with any rail. Um, it's a software package. It's Windows only, as far as I can tell, um, on their website. Um, it's it used to design layouts, um, and it's not restricted to modules. A lot of people use it for their home layouts or their large things and such. Um, and version 7 um, added in this capability to do modules, and I'll show you a bit of that. So I'm going to be focusing on, on this. Now, I remember which screen I need to switch. Well, okay, before I get to that... Okay, now this is important. Which version do you get? The current version that you download is 7.64. Now, 7.63 would work also. Um, they apparently upgraded things so we bit going to um, point three. If you happen to have downloaded the program and are using 7.62, which is the first one that I got when I upgraded from six, update it as soon as you can. Go to 7.64. Uh, because 762 had a bug that I discovered that would cause the program uh, when you did a particular thing to completely crash. And I was wondering, what am I doing wrong? Tried several variations. Well, it turned out I contacted um, AnyRail and at the bottom you can see the address where you can um, contact them and said, I don't know what this prob the problem I'm having with the program and explain to them anytime I grab a module and I'll show you how you do that. And well, because I'm doing T-track modules, I said, let's have some fun. Let's put a single track or single module down. Let's drag the double crossover and plop it down on that module. As soon as the crossover touched the module on the screen, the program crashed. It just disappeared from the screen. And, um, and I said, well, maybe a single crossover. That didn't help. So, so I contacted them. Next day, I had an email from them. And they said, oh, that's a detail we forgot to test. Um, we fixed it. You can now download version 763, which I did. And they had indeed fixed it. So that was a fast turnaround. And since then, they've tweaked it. And now we're up to 764. So if you upgrade now, that's what you'll get. Okay, so on to the program itself. So now I have to um, stop the share temporarily and change it to my other screen, which would be screen one. And now I have to bring up, okay, now you should see any real on your screen, do you? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Now, if you're, if you're new to this, what are we gonna do first? Well, first, this is T-Track, and so I need a table. Okay, how big of a table? All right, I want a table. Okay, we're going to make it a six-foot table, so it's 72 inches long, and they're usually 30 inches wide. Boom. Okay, so I've defined that. Now, that's the last time today I'm going to deal with inches because um, my... Um, scientist and by background so now we're going to metric so i converted our dimensions here but now 
Um, grid spacing, well, I'm doing T-Track, so I'm using Kato Unitrack. So all the short pieces, except for the little ones, are multiples of 62 centimeters. Sorry, 62 millimeters. So I've got that. So that's the grid we got here. So I'm now going to go to home, bit to window. So, okay, now this is my table. So I'll be working from here. All right. Oh, okay. I'm going to be using Unitrack. So we pull up track libraries and Kato, click Unitrack. There we go. And oh, there's our, our Unitrack over here. Now, if you're pulling up a, um, a layout off of, say, the T-Track wiki dot site, and they sh and you say, what, what kind of design there? They will show you the um, the track parts usually marked with the um, the catalog numbers, like the um, the basic straight pieces is two zero dash zero zero zero, et cetera. Okay, that's useful if you're copying those. Now, if I'm pulling a well, I need 186 straight. I switch over to code. So now I want the S186. Is this? Can you read all of this? Because it's small on my screen. It, it, yeah, we can get we can get the sense of it. On that, okay, but. good. So, so I wanted 186 straight. So I got that, and so I can grab. And if I wanted to connect that to a 124, grab that. And this is how you deal with the track. Get closer to get until dots appear. Oh, they're snapped together, and that's cool. So that's the basics of laying track um, in any rail, if you haven't done this before. Oh, but we're going to do modules. So this is, this is where it gets fun. You go to Insert, and you can create table shapes, or you can grab a module. OK, you could do a Make It This Easy module. I have no idea what those are. Um, or you can do a hex track, N track, or T track. D track. I want a single module, 330 millimeter depth. And you'll notice that they, um, they've they cropped off that additional millimeter on, on each side because you always want to leave just a little bit of space. So the tracks are going to hang over just a bit. Chances are they actually draw as 310, but that doesn't matter because here it's just a drawing. So, but it will act properly. Okay, now we have a module. And we can put it wherever we want. We could rotate it if we want, but we don't really want to right now. Um, so I'll put it back. We'll fix that later. You can see now, not only do we have the module base, we have the points where the track is supposed to connect. And, oh, I want another one. Oh, I'm going to grab myself a double. Drag, 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 drag. Oh, I've got two modules. And they're connected. This is slick. Okay. This is not going to be all sugar and spice. There's going to be some complications, but we'll hold that up for a bit. All right. Well, I got a couple of modules. I want to put some track on there. And, well, yeah, I'm going to get adventurous. Where was that, um, that double crossover thing? This is sometimes the fun, finding where, did, where was that part that I was using before. And... What was it? WX, was it not? Okay, I'm going to grab a single crossover. Same thing. All right. This is what would or version 7.6.2 would crash your program. As soon as the, the piece of track touched a module, program died. It's not doing that now, so this is a good thing. All right, now the track has clicked onto the module. So if I move the module around, the track drags with it. This is perfectly perfectly reasonable. And we'll just fill in this little space here, W662 PC. So, so far, so good. So you just keep putting the things together like that. And um, you, you learn if you want to disconnect something, um, well, like disconnect. Okay, I just disconnected the module. But I can put it back. If I disconnect the piece of track, come on. Ah, my finger fumbled. 
Okay, the modules are still connected though, but that's all right. You get used to this though, but you're able to, to put them together and such. So you can just keep putting them together. Now, now this is where there are some limitations and you need to know this um, when you get into this because you'll, you, you won't be quite as frustrated if you've heard it here first. How am I doing in time? 11 minutes, that's not bad. Um, first off, when I was creating a mod, putting a module down, okay, and you get, say, for, for T-Track, here's your collection you got. You got singles and doubles, different depths, quads, inside corners, outside corners, end caps, etc. They're predefined. Um, if I, if I, for example, wanted a um, double length module, which goes all the way back just as far as a corner would be, which is 365 deep, you can't do it with the module feature. They, the modules are, they've got this preset collection here and uh, they're not reconfigurable. They're not, you can't tweak them. You also cannot add more um, fixed um, attach points because all oh, that module is going to go all the way back. And I want a third line here because that's going to be a siding. Well, you can put the track on there, but there's no way to lock it to the uh, module unless you lock it to a piece of track it's next to, which would be, um, for example, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this. If I were to put this here, and yeah, I know that looks kind of weird. Um, I don't really want that one to get rid of that. And okay, I'm, and I've got the 33 millimeter spacing here too. And I put a piece of track here. Now, because this half of the track is locked to the module, both halves are because it's a double piece of double track. Now it will move together. Now, in my real module, I may not want to use a piece of double track there, but sometimes in the software, you have to pretend. But that's the way to lock it. If I had just used two pieces of single track here, that this third line would not be attachable to the module. So that's, that's a feature that's should be there but isn't also being able to resize the modules um we don't have that yet either now in the in my conversations with any rail um after we got the um the bug taken care of i said um well they asked well how, how do you like the feature i said well here are the things that i would really like to be able to do and i just mentioned what those are Fix in a uh, configure a module from just what their stock designs are. They said, Well, it's a new feature, we're holding off on that because um, we want to see how much people like this particular feature and um, how much they use it. And if there's a lot of interest and such, then we'll put in the effort and um, start expanding upon it. So it's kind of well. Let's wait and see sort of thing. So what I suggest is if you really want to use this and you get in there and you find it's a limitation, contact them and say, you know what I kind of wish you could do is, and, and let them know since they responded so quickly to the, um, the um, killer bug that I ran into, um, and hopefully they will listen as well when they, uh, when people are wanting uh, additions to this feature. Um, but it, it is a useful thing. I'm going to be digging into, into it more. You really, you really get a, got to get it and play around with it and learn the tricks of, I want to disconnect this piece of track from this, but not that from the module, but not the other track. Um, you got certain ways to do it. Um, which would be more detail for right now. You just, you just play with it. It's, it's easy to do and you're really not going to mess things up. So I think, yeah. Okay. So that's all I've got to do for the demonstration here because it would get, um, that's right. Get real wordy. I sometimes don't know when to shut up. That's a problem. So, um, 
back to my other screen um, to finish up here. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of features in AnyReal um, that are really cool. One that I've noticed um, this time that I that may or may not have been in earlier versions. First off, I'm using Kata Unitrack. Um, they have added, and I, you may not even be aware that this exists. Um, Kato sells FlexTrack. Mm -hmm. That's kind of handy. You can buy it in boxes of 10. I've got one at home. And um, that can allow you to do some slick things. And um, another feature is, um, and this applies not only to flex track, but you could do this with just plain old straight track too. You can trim it to custom lengths. I mean, we talk about being able to get the razor saw out and cut pieces of track to special lengths. Mm -hmm. See, I got this piece of track. You see this little thing says cut. Watch this. Um, I want to cut a piece. I want, oh, heck. I used to watch Get Smart. So we're going to make a piece that's 86 millimeters long. I think we're on the wrong part. Wrong screen. Oh, our, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not able to see that, but we're just about at the top of the hour anyway here. So. Okay, let me let me switch quick. I, that was my mistake. I don't do this stuff. Now I can, yeah, you should be able to see it. Okay, so um, I'll make this quick. So we're going to cut this piece of track, and we'll say I want 86, and we'll say cut here. Now our piece of track is two pieces of track. Hmm. We make custom lengths. And the same thing can be done with our uh, our flex track. Cut here. And now I've got a little baby piece of flex track. And a big one. So that's stuff that I that may have come new with version seven, or maybe I just wasn't paying attention with version six, but there it is. So we shall see what happens. All right. Um, and I think that's all I got for today. Um, Thomas, thank you so much. That, mm. that was very interesting. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs>